Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to this session on big data analytics. Uh, we're, um, my, my name is Harish Subramanian. Uh, just to give you a brief introduction about myself, uh, I'm a program director here at uh, Great Lakes uh, in specifically for the big data analytics program. And uh, today we're going to talk uh, briefly about some of the questions that a number of you have had about this particular program. Um, about careers in big data analytics, uh, about uh, you know the industry trends and uh, what we're seeing out there, and what prompted us to launch this program to begin with. Now, ever since uh, um, you know I, I've been working on this particular program, uh, the feedback on the interest for big data analytics and the kind of momentum that this particular area is is uh, garnering in the industry. Uh, is quite staggering, right? So there's a lot of attention, there's a lot of interest, uh, a lot of people out there who are, um, you know, not just trying to understand this area, but trying to really understand how they can make the most of it um, as they, you know, try to bring this in the context of their own industries. So we'll talk a little bit about all of those areas and how this applies to you particularly in this particular session. Uh, so let me get straight into it. Um, to begin with, you know, before we in, get too far, I'd love to talk briefly about what they're saying out there, right? Uh, you might have heard some of these things. You might have heard, you know, big data analytics and analytics and a variety of, um, you know, the kind of propagation of data and things like that uh, spoken at length out there. Uh, everywhere from business magazines to the internet to you know Twitter and even Facebook. You know, NASCOM in particular uh, has has mentioned uh, quite recently that the big data analytics sector in India is expected to witness eightfold growth. Right, uh, sixteen billion dollars is what they're estimating this industry will uh, will be worth in 2025. And and you know they estimate the current worth to be about $2 billion, which is not nothing to scoff at in itself, right? So even the current opportunity seems to be quite big. They also, they also mentioned that nearly 1 lakh people um, will be employed in data analytics roles um, and, and uh, I mean, are, are currently employed in data analytics roles and, and a similar kind of requirement will, will be required in big data analytics in particular in the future, right? Um, McKinsey, in, in a recent report, has mentioned that just in the US alone, uh, they expect to see over a million and a half data managers by the year 2018. And Accenture, in its own practice, has talked about how all of their clients are making more of these data-driven decisions and putting analytics at the heart of their businesses. Right? So all of, uh, all of these companies, these stalwarts, have been uh, constantly talking about the interest in this area. They've been talking about how it impacts their business, and and it's it's become hard to ignore. So what is all this fuss about? Right? Uh, we've gone through various cycles of of business and computing, um, and and you know there seems to be a new rage in town pretty much every couple of years, um, and and the flavor of the season seems to be big data and big data analytics. So what is all this fuss about? Is it real or is it just hype? Right. Let's start with the basics, right? There is no big data analytics without data. But why is it so important at this particular moment in time? Right? It's because nearly all of the data that you see out there, right? About 95% of the world's data has been produced in just the last couple of years. And by the year 2020, 40 zettabytes Right, which is two to the power seventy bytes. Um, that's the estimated amount of data that will be in the world by the by the year twenty twenty. Right. There are two point five quintillion bytes created every single day. About eighty percent of this data that's created every day is unstructured. Now, this is a very unique characteristic, um, something that's exploded in the in the re in recent times. Right, and when I say unstructured, what does this mean? This means things that are not in databases. Right. The photos that we post on Facebook and Instagram, the posts, the log files, you know, all of the, the cat memes on Tumblr and you name it, right? So everything that that we post, that other people post, that people respond to, uh, and this is not just in social media, this is everything that, you know, we send back and forth, 
in terms of files it's everything that we share um, in terms of media it's all of this right and all of this is unstructured in, and and what this means is that it isn't cleanly cataloged within a database right and 96 percent that's the percentage estimated of companies that have multiple internal and, and external customer data sources right so what does this mean um previously everything used to be stored in a particular file right? it was stored in a file that was then kept in a file folder a physical file kept in inside a file folder that was a big metal cabinet in somebody's office right? now you have various sources of data you still have those files you still have those files and quite often they're now obviously digitized and stored in a computer and not not in somebody's file folder but in addition to that you also have again your sources of of customer information that are coming in through you know various terminals um, if, if you're a retail customer i mean if you're a retail industry then it's coming through all of your point of sale terminals it's coming through customer feedback forms it's coming through all of these different um uh, social media channels that you're engaging them on you have internal data that's generated by every single department you have financial data that's generated by your finance teams um, and all of this now has to be you know looked at in 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 a common um platform right so you have to look at this holistically previously every single piece of data that you had used to be sliced and diced separately and all of it was used in service of trying to understand you know how that particular department worked now you're looking at at you know as i mentioned 80 percent of the data that's now unstructured so they're, they're not easily you know imported into an excel file and um and analyzed and scrutinized the way they could be and in addition you have a whole range of uh, of internal data that that everybody's generating right so now how do you take all of these disparate sources internal sources of data the customer data sources and all of that and make sense of it that's where you know the power of big data analytics comes in so you know we talked a little bit about what's what's out there in the industry we talked about the fact that you know there is um a lot of demand for all of these uh, you know the big data tools and and understanding of all of this data that's out there and so on but but when you're you know when you're trying to understand how all of this works in your context um you have to ask yourself a simple question which is what's in it for me so let's look at that right what all this demand has translated to right, is you know it's not just the demand for data and the demand for tools and systems that that can crunch all of this data but a demand for intelligent professionals who can make sense of all of this data who can translate this into valuable insight that that is actionable and and we're seeing this uh, bear out in the industry right so big data analytics careers when compared to traditional it careers seem to command a 50% premium in salaries and and just like as I, uh, just like i was telling you earlier in terms of uh, what what mckinsey estimated in the us there is an estimated shortfall in data analysts and data scientists of 2 lakh professionals by the year 2018 And there are now 600 analytics firms in India. Right? Not, not all of them uh, are working on big data technologies yet. Not all of them uh, are, are working on these disparate sources of data that we're talking about. But if they aren't yet, they're going to do it very, very soon. Right? It's just a matter of time. So all of this energy that I was talking about, that that um, that's manifest in the industry, right? all of this uh, latent potential with these you know billions and billions of bytes of data that that are being generated every day all of that translates to a huge opportunity for you so what are the kind of companies that um that are looking at big data as an opportunity well the short answer is pretty much every company right now obviously that's not going to happen overnight you know the if you think back to the 1980s and the 1990s um it you know not every company in the world 
migrated towards digitization and moved towards um, working on computers overnight. It, it happened over time. But now it's inconceivable that someone is not using a digital source of information and is not using a computer. So it's only a matter of time. So who are the people who are going to start, who are going to be at the forefront of this revolution? Right. Obviously, the, there are going to be the companies that that own and and uh, process all of this data in the world. Google, among Google, you know, obviously is at the forefront of all of this. Um, IBM is another you know, major driving force in all of the big data analytics revolution. Uh, Amazon, of course, but it's not just these new age technology companies. Um, you know, banks have historically had have been storehouses of all of this information, right? So Citibank and, and um, ICICI Bank and HSBC and all of these different banks have always needed to use all of these different sources of uh, customer and market information to make intelligent decisions, right? Consulting companies, where there is a lot of energy in business, there are consulting companies that service these uh, these companies, right? So everything from your traditional management consulting firms to um, accounting and uh, and financial consulting firms like your KPMGs and Deloitte's to the technology consulting firms like Infosys. And every one of these companies is, well, I, I won't say is moving towards this area because, because I believe every one of them has. And every one of these companies has a data analytics practice, has a big data practice. Um, every one of these companies is now Staffing up aggressively, trying to you know get every single talented person out there to join its ranks, and all of this is is uh, is not something that's that's a coming revolution. It's actually a revolution that's already here. Right? Obviously, there are there are going to be waves and waves of companies that come in the future. There are going to be you know a whole host of retail companies, real estate companies, um, healthcare companies, you name it. Right? All of these companies are going. I mean, manufacturing companies. All of these are going to. Um, you know, start recruiting aggressively in in big data analytics. Just yesterday, I was talking to a professional who um, works for Siemens, and who works for Siemens not in the technology side, but works on on their manufacturing side. Right, and and even they are looking at, um, you know, with the advent of Internet of Things and and a whole host of, uh, um, you know, smart machines, they're looking at uh, big data being critical to their business. And and where you have all of these business, uh, all of these, uh, you know, careers growing within industries that that aren't traditionally associated with big data, uh, that's a huge opportunity. Right. So so it's not, um, a, you know, this representative list of companies that you see on this page is not uh, is by no means the um, you know the end of the road in terms of companies that that are using big data technologies that are using data analytics that are using advanced machine learning techniques that are using um you know simple uh, data analytics techniques that that have historically been prevalent uh, it's pretty much every single company out there but these tend to be the most aggressive hires or, or recruiting companies these tend to have the largest need at any given time um and and hence we've put them out there uh, incidentally, they also tend to be, uh, you know, these companies have also historically been some of the most aggressive recruiters um, of our own graduates of, of some of our own uh, analytics professionals that that we've graduated from um, from our programs, and and therefore they're, um, you know, they're these are companies that we have good relationships with. So far, we've talked about the demand that is in the industry for big data analytics professionals. We've talked about the opportunity as a whole. And we've talked a little bit about the kind of companies that you might be working in if you were to get into one of these roles, if you were to take this opportunity. Let's spend just a couple of minutes now talking about what kind of roles are out there. Right? What kind of roles are you likely to be working in if you were to enter this industry and if you were to walk into this, uh, you know, this set of opportunities? You might have heard of a whole range of uh, career options and a whole range of roles. As with any emerging area, any emerging opportunity in the industry, uh, the roles are still being finalized. Uh, companies tend to call um, you know, a whole range of roles a whole different set of things. Uh, the standardization is yet to happen. But I think certain patterns emerge. 
the all of the roles in this space can largely be looked at as falling in one of three axes right axis number one is data so this is where a lot of data is managed a lot of data is uh, is sourced and and wrangled and wrestled with and and uh, and you know the right algorithms applied and some of the the insight drawn out right the second dimension is the technology that supports all of this data analysis and and as we just talked about uh, with the more complexity that is in the environment the more complexity that is in the uh, in the types of data that that you're dealing with the more complex the set of tools available and the third dimension is business right now all of this analysis and all of these technologies that you're using is obviously in service of a business problem and and so understanding the business context um, and and how all of this analysis is translated into a tangible real world solution um, is actually very important and so let me just walk you through some of these roles data scientist is considered to be the pinnacle of uh, of a lot of the big data analytics careers um, but it's just one uh you know it, it it's the culmination of one angle right one axis so if you follow the data axis as i just talked about you will reach um, eventually reach the position of data scientist and as a data scientist you are expected to use a combination of your analysis skills your complex modeling skills uh, your understanding of the business itself um, and then determine the appropriate kind of techniques and algorithms and and what kind of data you will be pulling in and how you will be manipulating it and what kind of analyses need to be done and so on. Uh, it's a fairly rigorous profession and, and you're unlikely to get there unless uh, you know, you've, you've done a little bit of work and you've had a little bit of exposure into some of these uh, disparate um, you know, professional areas. Right? So the data side of things, understanding a little bit of the technology and understanding a little bit of the business. On the technology angle, uh, but almost an equivalent or even higher role in some organizations is a chief technology officer or a chief data officer. Right? Now, the role uh, of this person is to make decisions on the company-wide management of data. Right? As, as a CTO does in a, traditional, uh, in a traditional sense, you have to determine what kind of technologies are going to be used across the organization, how you're going to handle data, how you're going to deal with security issues, um, and, and you know what part of this... Uh, mammoth technology stack is going to be utilized uh, in your particular context. Right. The next role you might hear of is data analysts. Again, I'm going to switch this back to the data dimension. Data analysts typically work closely with data scientists. They build, validate, and maintain the, te the techniques and the analytical models that are laid out by the data scientists. Um, and it's usually considered a stepping stone on the way to becoming a data scientist. Right. Um, it is a very hands-on role um, and, and a fairly analytical role. Um, it requires a fair bit of rigor in, in understanding the various techniques and algorithms that are out there. Um, and and uh, you, know, it, it, you do need a little bit of an understanding of, of how the, the technology tools are implemented, but largely you're going to be a user rather than an implementer of the technology stack. Next, I'll go to the big data engineer. Big data engineer? is often called a data engineer, a senior software engineer. You, you could call it a whole range of things. And that's because um, this comes from uh, you know, a traditional technology role. Right? And uh, you, know, you, could, you could imagine anybody who's implementing technology solutions at large scale and, and it, in, a, in a very robust manner, but now doing it with specific Hadoop and Apache Spark and Pig and Hive and, and these related tools and technologies. Um, making sure the data lakes and data pipelines are, are robust. Um, and all of this is done uh, by the big data engineer or the data engineer, and as, as you might call them. Right. Uh, they develop, they maintain, they test, they evaluate big data solutions within organizations. If, uh, if a solution uh, needs to be changed or tweaked to suit a business case, this is the person you would go to. Uh, most of the time, they're also designed in, you know, they're also involved in the design of uh, big data solutions, although largely that resides with the big data solutions architect. Uh, the kinds of things that this big data engineer will need to be familiar with are, you know, Hadoop and, and associated uh, technologies, Hive and Pig and so on, Apache Spark, um, no SQL databases like MongoDB and HBase, um, and and not just knowing a little bit about all of these different technologies, but knowing the applicability of some of these technologies, right? When do you use which of these technologies? 
The, the next role I'll talk about is a big data solutions architect. Now, this is, um, you know, again, an architect role in the traditional technology sense of the word. Uh, you know, if you were to try and design an entire system um, of interconnected parts, uh, interconnected technology tools, this is the person that would typically do it. Uh, they need to be able to interpret a little bit of the business need. Uh, they need to be able to describe the structure and behavior of what this big data solution is going to do and, and also how that is going to deliver a certain business outcome. And so they need to have hands-on experience with the Hadoop applications uh, and all of the technology stack that we just talked about. But they also act as the link between the needs of the business side of the organization the big data scientists and the big data engineer. So it's a very critical role. Um, it's not a role where you're going to, you know, work constantly to try and um, build and rebuild the system, uh, you know, over and over again. Um, you know, but 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 when they're called for, they're a very very important uh, function because they effectively are the nerve center of uh, of the design of your big data solution. There are various other roles I'm, that I am not talking about. Um, one of them is uh, a big data consultant. Uh, this person requires a commercial awareness, requires interpersonal skills, the ability to synthesize information and ability to make trade-offs between various solutions and various tools. Um, this role is largely, uh, re largely resides within consulting companies. So your Accenture's and your Fractal Analytics and Genpacks and all of, all of these uh, you know, client services organizations tend to have more of the big data consultants but in larger companies and, and more mature big data implementation um, oriented companies, you will see these roles reside internally as well. Another role that I haven't talked about extensively is a big data visualizer. And that's because this is not a role that you will see very commonly in the industry right now, but I believe that in the next couple of years, this is going to become uh, a fairly common thing to have. And the reason is the more com the more complexity you introduce in terms of the sources of data and the more complexity you introduce in terms of all of the different tools that are required, um, the harder and harder and the more abstract all of all of this analysis and, and, and technology becomes from the business user, right? So the business user then needs to understand uh, in, in a very human and tangible sense what, um, you know, what the outcome of all of this analysis is. Right. So the big data visualizer not only needs to understand visualization frameworks, uh, what kinds of ways you can present data in, uh, you know, human computer interaction, how uh, the presentation of a data affects a business uh, decision or how it affects a human being. Um, but they also need empathy to be able to see it, uh, see things from the other person's perspective. They need good communication. And most of all, they actually need to understand the underlying analysis. So it's a fairly broad role. Um, you know, in right. So <clears throat> we've established so far that you know this is a lucrative area in the industry. We've established that there is a lot of demand for big data analytics professionals, and we've talked briefly about the kinds of roles there are. Right. So clearly, um, you know that 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 demonstrates to you that you know this is a place that you should be thinking about seriously. This is uh, an area of employment that you should be thinking about seriously, but you know you might be sold already. But um, let's talk a bit about how you can get there. Right? So, what are the skills you need to have right? uh, to be to be proficient, conversant, and relevant in this particular in industry? To be um, you know taken seriously in big data analytics. You need to have strong quantitative skills. Right now, obviously, again, depending on what area within that, whether you're going to be on the data science side or the or the you know the data engineering side, or whether you're going to be on the business analysis side, you'll need different kinds of quantitative skills. But when you're dealing with lots of data and lots of numbers and lots of um, uh, you know unstructured data, you do need to understand how to make sense of you know all of this. Um, so, you know, a quantitative understanding, quantitative aptitude is quite important, right? Um, and, and with that, you also need a bit of programming, right? Uh, again, depending on which, which angle of this you're going to be looking at, you do need to be able to program either in, you know, in, in 
R if you want to work largely with statistics. Um, in Python, if you want to be able to manipulate and wrangle all of this data and put it through the big data technology stack and um, and make sense of it uh, and to use all of these packages. Um, you know, if you're using some of the older technologies that you might have, uh, I won't say older, but um, some of the more prevalent technologies that, that are already out there in the, in the market, you might, uh, you know, need to need to write MapReduce code on, on uh, on Hadoop, and and for that you'll need to um, you'll learn how to how to do that. Um, you know, even if you're using Spark, uh, Apache Spark, you might need to do it depending on on the organization and what kind of um, language is used uh, as 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 the norm in the in the particular company. You might need to know Java. You might need to know Scala. You might need to know Python. Um, the, you know, all all of that aside, I think you know just comfort and proficiency in the fundamentals of programming is important right which language you've you've been using historically um i'd say is, is less important because it's something that once you're conversant with uh, programming in general is something you can pick up relatively quickly um so but but you know having some kind of programming experience is always a, a good thing but even uh, uh, even above all of these um you know more tangible skills, I'd say, is a logical and analytical mind, right? Um, if you think about the idea of, uh, you know, working with, you know, millions and millions of bytes of data on a daily basis, uh, you know, working with multiple sources, 10, 20, 30, sometimes, you know, dozens of data sources, um, you know, you're, you're talking about, you know, pulling all of these different kinds of, uh, you know, information from, everything from databases to log files to you know your wearable sensors on your hand to uh, the camera that's captured images to tweets i mean that's a lot of information and a lot of um, things thrown at you and, and if you're the, not the kind of person who's going to in, try to make sense of this and, and introduce some structure and, and logic to how all of this is working um, you're going to struggle a little bit right so so having a, a a logical and analytical mindset is important. Um, I don't think uh, I am of the view very strongly that it's not something that uh, is entirely innate. Obviously, all of us have preferences, and some of us are more structured thinkers than the other. But but I don't think it's something that you know. If if you believe that you're not among the most structured thinkers, that it precludes you somehow from this whole field. I believe the level of structure that I'm talking about here is something every all of us can learn. Um, so I wouldn't be too concerned about, uh, you know, your proclivity or your predisposition. I think it's more important to uh, to develop frameworks and 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 ways of thinking that that actually help you uh, be more logical and analytical. Right. Uh, the next thing that's really important, obviously, is a thirst for knowledge. And the reason this is very important in an emerging area like big data analytics is that if if at this very moment you went out went to google uh, opened a browser window and typed in big data technology stack right you would get at least a thousand different hits each one of them talking about a dozen or more different technologies interacting with each other in a whole new way right and if you look at a 2014 version of this picture versus a 2015 version to one that was done last month, the technology stack looks completely different. The tools used com look completely different, and the techniques used look completely different. So I think, you know, being being able to pick things up quickly um, is a, is usually a function of your interest in staying up to date, and that is a huge prerequisite um, to succeed in this uh, in this space of big data analytics. And what do I mean finally by a knack for interpretation? It is, uh, it, it is, it is specifically the the ability to look at a problem, um, look at vast amounts of data, look at um, solutions that have come out of a particular analysis technique, and interpret it into what it means for the real world. Right? And I think that is a very important skill that that, that I think if you haven't used recently I, again it's something i believe all of us have to a large degree but it's if it's something that you haven't used um it's something that 
that you should be uh, you know kind of reawakening and and building your muscles in and i think it's it's a very important skill uh, especially if you want to succeed in big data analytics now that's a set of skills but what do you need to learn specifically the you know foundation upon which all of this data analysis and big data analysis is built um, is statistics right? understanding basic statistics um, you know uh, how data is distributed um, where does all of this data fall uh, in terms of uh, um, you know a distribution a, a larger global distribution uh, all of that is is critical right now you don't need to know a whole lot of statistics or very very advanced statistics but i think it is important to recognize and to acknowledge that that uh, having you know these sound foundations in statistics is very important the second thing to to learn is how you manage all of this data that's coming from various sources remember i mentioned ju just a few minutes ago that um that you know all of this data is going to be thrown at you uh, from you know physical uh, sensors and all of the physical information to you know log files and things like that that are already stored in your computer to databases to you know social and real time uh, information how do you manage all of this how do you um, what are the what identifying what these sources are uh, making sense of um, you know the the frequency at which all of these different sources of data is 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 coming to you uh, make sense of the kind of data it is um, and and then making wise decisions based on that that's something that that you will learn that you will learn with practice um, but with a lot of deliberate practice the third obvious thing is an understanding of the big data technologies as i just mentioned there are hundreds and hundreds of tools that the, whose names you'll hear over the over the next few years and making sense of you know what this entire landscape looks like and which of these tools is appropriate uh, is something that's very critical for you to understand again nobody I, I can guarantee that there are probably a handful of people around the world who actually know every one of these different technologies um, and not maybe not even a handful but the important thing is to understand you know what they are um, where they're relevant and when you want to use these different tools um, Analytics techniques, and again, suitability to a situation. Um, you know, understanding what the different um, ways of manipulating the data are. How do you actually look at data in, in various different ways um, and draw insight from it? Machine learning techniques is, is is probably just an extension of these analytics techniques. They're more advanced analytics techniques, but but these are techniques that um, that not that don't just let you analyze data that's uh, that's come to you so far but it's a way of making predictions and suggestions about the future um, based on all of the data that you've received in the past and right now right and finally you can do all of this analysis in the world but visualization right is uh, you know we are visual creatures um it's hard for us and and you know for a lot of us abstract thinking is not something that comes naturally so at the end of the day especially when you're trying to make practical tangible business decisions you know being able to visualize all of all of these different analyses and uh, um, and convey this in in a way that you know the average person can understand it is critically critically important right so these visualization um, techniques require you to be you know one part um, analytical and one part artistic and creative and it's it's a very unique blend of skills that's required but it's again something that that i think we all have and can can reawaken and, and exercise i've given you an overview of what is out there what i've heard from from you know industry experts from people who are hiring into these positions from people who um you know train people once they have hired professionals into these roles uh, about what the demand is and what you need to know okay. and because there is this demand and because we now have an understanding of what it is that that uh, that will help you get to these positions uh, we've put together a very uh, practical tangible and industry relevant program in big data analytics the postgraduate program in big data analytics and i'm going to walk you through in just a few minutes um, what some highlights about this program and 
and why this is relevant, right? So as I mentioned, this is a postgraduate program. Um, it's 12 months long. It's an executive program. So it's designed for working professionals. So you don't have to take time off from work, right? So um, even within the working professional, uh, the world of working professionals, we've aimed this at the technical uh, working professionals. So people who have started to build technical careers, um, you know, you might be very early in your career, or you might already be a little bit, a little bit of uh, um, time into your career. But but as long as you you're a practicing technology professional, um, I think this will be very relevant to you. It's a program where we have, you know, in in the blended learning um, uh, ideal, we have blended extensive, very intensive classroom experience with um, a lot of online and hands-on support. Right, so. You know, think about it this way. You will be coming into class one weekend a month. You will dedicate that entire weekend to classroom instruction where you will have faculty, you will have industry experts, you will have some of the, the you know, the brightest minds and the most practical minds um, on using big data analytics coming and teaching you in class. You will then have hands-on work. You will have assignments and, and, uh, and projects that you'll, you know, that will help you you know, wrestle all of this data yourself and, and get a feel for how it's done in practice. And you'll have online support to ensure that you're learning by doing. Right? Um, as I mentioned, you know, we, we all of this, you know, the, the starting point for putting all of this together and, and even creating this program comes from our strong connections to industry. Right? We, we've spoken to a number of industry experts. We've spoken to people who are already um, experienced in in these areas and and ask them what's required and so you know we it's it's extensive it's very very industry relevant and extremely focused on what you will be using practically in your careers in big data analytics and, and finally we, we're not starting from scratch here um we already have a a very, very well recognized and, and very successful program in business analytics and business intelligence. Um, it is, you know, by different um, rankings, it, it's been ranked number one um, in the country as an analytics program. Uh, it's also a working professionals program. So it's also been designed for, for professionals who don't have to leave the workplace. But rather than focusing on the you know, on the technical professional that focuses a little bit more on the functionally oriented, the business oriented um, uh, professional. Right? So we have experience in, in teaching analytics to professionals in a way that's tangible and that's productive and that's useful for them in their careers um, as they either grow or transition into analytics careers. So we know what works. But in this particular instance, we're now focusing on the technology professionals or the, the more technically oriented professionals. So we've extended that ability and our expertise in the analytics space um, to the more technically oriented professionals. So why is this course unique? Right? Um, I'm sure this is not the only way to go out and learn either the big data tools or some of these techniques or the statistical foundations or all of these different areas that I've talked about. Right. But this course is fairly unique. And let me tell you uh, a little bit about why. Right. First, it's a very hands on program. Right? We have, as I mentioned, worked really, really hard to make sure that you wrestle with the data, wrestle with the complexity of big data analytics so that you emerge from this program ready to do this uh, from day one. Right. So the, the kinds of things we've included in this program are a three month real life capstone project. Uh, You'll, you'll over the course of this program, you'll build a portfolio of real world mini projects. And so you'll you'll build on, you'll you'll work on these mini projects um, at periodic intervals throughout the, every couple of months, and you know at the end of it, you'll have a portfolio of projects that you've done, so that you're not just going out to future employers or to your own organization heads and saying, I've learned this, but you'll be able to prove it through a series of projects that you've worked on, culminating in the capstone project, of course. Right? And nearly everything we teach you and everything that you will learn in this program, you will learn by doing. So there is going to be a 24 by 7 available online lab. Right? So it's, it's 
fully on the cloud. It's it's completely online. You'll have access to it anytime you want, anytime that that you can sneak some time away from your work um, to work on these problems real time, right? Because the key, as as you can imagine, with a lot of these uh, these technologies, these techniques, is is practice. So the more you get to practice on it, the better you get at it. Right? So that's all of the hands-on elements. The second thing that sets this course apart is the industry focus. Right? So, you know, as I mentioned, industry experts have, have helped us create this curriculum. Right? And, and not only have they helped us create this curriculum and advised us, but they also teach these classes. Right? They mentor our projects. They're involved in every step of this program. Right? Not only do they then teach you and mentor you through all of your you know the you know the content, but they then lead sessions where you, where they teach you some of the tricks of the trade, right? Where you will learn a little bit about how all of this is done in practice, in their jobs every day. And then the third big advantage of this particular program is that you do this while you work, right? Now, historically, people have had to make make the sacrifice. Um, to take some time off from work, especially technology professionals, to take some time off from work and then go get a master's degree or um, go do th an intensive course somewhere uh, to get these technology skills. And the only alternative has been to do it in an online format, um, which you know for, for, for some of us, it, it works fine. And for some of us, and for a lot of us, in fact, it, it, uh, it, it doesn't quite stick. Right? And it doesn't stick for a variety of reasons. Obviously, there are, um, you know, there's a, there's a level of self-discipline required. There's a level of um, human interaction that's missing. There are a lot of these these kind of factors. But you know, rarely has there been an opportunity for you as a technology working technology professional to combine the rigor of classroom learning, the kind of face-to-face -face interactions that help cement some of this learning, with uh, you know the flexibility to do your assignments and and projects online and to get online support and to do it at your convenience and and finally not have to take time off from work right um so that combination is is fairly unique in this particular program so we've talked a little bit about what makes this program unique and 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 who it's for um so let's briefly talk about what you will learn in this program as i mentioned uh, a little bit earlier we talked about you know what what are the areas that, that this entire space of big data analytics is built on you know obviously there are some statistical and technical foundations uh, also a little bit of programming and and some of the statistical foundations and we will definitely cover these um, we will go through the big data technologies not all of them but the most relevant ones we will go through the ones that are most widely used and the ones that are that are emerging in, into being powerhouses in the industry where you know, a vast majority of companies, 90% of the companies will be using one, one or more of these, these technology tools. So we're not going to cover things that are not relevant, but definitely the ones that, that you will likely encounter in your jobs. Right? Some of the machine learning techniques on, this, um, on these tools, right? So how do you then take all of this vast amount of complex data and then you know, run some machine learning techniques on it? And finally, visualization and communicating this insight to the business. Right? So how do you uh, visualize vast amounts of complex data into something meaningful, something that 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 everybody in business can interpret and then make good, savvy strategic decisions based on that. Right? So those are the kind of the four um, interconnected streams of learning. Now, that's not to say that each of these works in isolation, obviously. You know everything builds on on the other, but but it's good to understand the building blocks. <clears throat> the program curriculum. Um, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this. Um, you know, if you uh, if you haven't already got if you al haven't already received our brochures, um, please reach out to us and and we'd be happy to send it to you. Or you can go to greatlearning.in and you'll you can download it yourself. Um, but it is, uh, you know, it, it does give you a little bit more context and a little bit more of a flavor on what exactly we mean when we say statistical foundations or big data technology or machine learning on big data and so on. Um, it's important to know who will be teaching this program, right? Um, it's, 
uh, as I mentioned, you know, because of our uh, strong industry connections and because of the um, the context with which you know we we even started to build this program, uh, industry professionals are at the at the heart of this. Right, so they're going to be everywhere. They're going to be teaching you these courses. They're going to mentor you. They've advised us on on the relevance of of this program. Um, they'll come and take industry sessions. So so you'll see a lot of industry connections. But at the same time, uh, you know there is also a strong academic component to it. There are going to be a number of people who have dedicated their careers to in, into understanding the analytics techniques and then being able to distill the most practical and relevant insight to you. Right. So, you know, we have um, a whole range of uh, expertise, as as you'll notice. Um, Dr. Bappa has been, you know, one of the pillars of our, um, um, you know, the more business oriented PGP BABI program. Uh, he's a, you know, got a background, extensive background in not just in statistics and analytics, but then in how this is used in a variety of industries, particularly in the financial services industry. Uh, Dr. Srabashi Basu, Dr. P.K. Vishwanathan, both, um, you know, pillars of the academic community. They've, they've worked their entire lives um, understanding the various issues within um, data interpretation and analysis and, and then translating that into practical advice. Uh, Amit Kapoor comes from a different perspective, uh, has worked in management consulting, um, has worked in practical industry for a whole you know for a decade or more um and and has then gone on to you know try to uh, put on a teaching hat and and teach uh how you can communicate effectively uh, from a from a data visualization perspective how you can take vast amounts of complex data um you know explore it visualize it um communicate that insight and and uh, and present it to people Right. So that's that's the kind of expertise range that that we've built for um, for you from a from a teaching perspective. Now this is just a sampling of the kinds of people who will be teaching you. Right. Obviously we have a whole um, a whole roster of people who will be working through working with us on on a variety of courses. Um, so you'll see you know potentially different faculty teaching you on all the different courses. But but it's good for you to get to put a face to a name and and say. You know, these are the kinds of people who are going to be teaching me. So that's the academic side. And as I mentioned, in addition to that, we have a range of um, top-notch industry experts. Right? So you'll you'll notice here that there are, you know, um, heads of data data analysis teams, uh, you know, chief data scientists and big data analysts, and and you know, decades and decades of experience among our industry experts. Again, this is just a sampling of the people who will be working with us. Um, you know, but but you'll you'll see a whole host of them through uh, projects that they will mentor you on, um, industry sessions where they'll tell you a little bit about both the career side of things as well as the practical application side of things, uh, as well as teaching you a lot of the more industry relevant topics. Really, you know, we've it's it you know I've, I mentioned some of the individuals here, but we also have affiliations with a number of the organizations that these individuals represent. So not only will our capstone projects be practical and, and industry relevant and, and be co-designed and developed with these uh, you know, these really, really impressive companies, uh, but we'll have a number of people, senior experts from these places, from these companies come and talk and uh, uh, talk to you about you know what works and what doesn't and how things are done and how things should be done. So, you know, we've we've talked a little bit about you know the demand in the industry, the career paths, um, and our particular offering. Right? It's important for you to make the right decisions. Um, you know, obviously this program isn't for everybody, but it does suit a vast um, number of you. And and the reason I say that is because we've designed it explicitly for the working professionals with a lot of your constraints in mind. How do you decide if this is the right program for you? Who should pursue this course? And if you're a technology professional aiming to progress to big data analytics roles, either within your company or if you want to move on to different companies, this is probably a good program for you. If you're just starting in a big data or data science role and want to understand all the different moving parts, um, 
it's equally important and it's equally relevant to you. Um, and if you're the kind of person who's keen to learn by doing and not just, uh, you know, sit back and, and get some uh, high level information, but if you actually want to roll up your sleeves and work on things to a, to the, to the, to a degree where you are comfortable and proficient in it, this is the perfect course for you. Okay. Um, of course, there are some prerequisites. If, if, you, if you do want to take this program, as I mentioned, we've designed this explicitly for technical professionals. So not only do you need a bachelor's degree, um, but you also need two years of full-time work experience. And as I mentioned, this is you know in the context of a working professional in their workplaces. So I think having that work experience is important to, to understand the business context. Being a being a tech technology uh, ready program, uh, we do need that you have programming experience. Again, there is a preference in terms of Java, C plus plus, Python, or R. But you know, as long as you've worked um, extensively in in either uh, you know in in your job or on the side um, with uh, any programming language, I think I think. Uh, for you to then be able to pick up the, the technology tools relevant to this and the language is relevant to this particular program shouldn't be too hard. So um, we'll, we'll trust you on that one. Uh, SQL knowledge is required, um, but it's not something that's rocket science. So I, I believe that anybody with programming experience, if you haven't already uh, you know, developed uh, an understanding of SQL, should be able to pick it up fairly quickly. Now, let me just, uh, uh, you know, go off on a, on a slight tangent here, but but you know what does it mean to have programming experience? It doesn't mean that you are, uh, you know, the necessarily the you know the most innovative programmer out there. I I understand that a lot of you have been working in different areas and so, we even within technology careers, and some of you are constantly solving new problems every day, and some of you are working with with a different set of problems uh, like the ones that are more relevant when you're deploying a fairly stable technology solution but at scale um, so so it's not to say that you know you need to have worked through a range of sorting or stacking problems every single day and and you know be up to date in kind of the you know the the tips and tricks section of programming but but it does mean that you need to have a lot of hands on kind of practical experience uh, the level of programming itself is not going to be uh, you know, inaccessible. Right? Anybody who's comfortable with uh, with technology and programming should be able to pick up all of the all of the skills and the techniques that we cover during the program. Um, so it's it's not rocket science again. Uh, we do require that you have uh, at least college level understanding of mathematics and statistics. And the reason I say say that uh, goes back to what I mentioned earlier, which is that you know, all of this is built on the foundations of uh, uh, of stats and, and math. Um, so while we won't be, you know, doing complex mathematics uh, on a daily basis on in class, um, it does help for you to understand a little bit of what was going on behind the scenes for you to be able to then implement some of these techniques and solutions. Okay. Now, <clears throat> a lot of the work during the actual program will be done in Python and, and R as programming languages. So for those of you who come in with programming experience but don't know Python and R, we will provide you a pre-course tutorial, right? So, um, and and some support so that you will be on level footing at the start. So by the time you know you come into class on day one, everybody will have enough of an understanding that nobody feels at a disadvantage. So we talked about who should take this course, who should not pursue this course, right? So the, as I said, while this this does suit a vast majority of you. Uh, it's not a course for everybody. Okay. If you are not in a technology role and you don't intend to be anytime in the future, perhaps this is not the right program for you. If you're still interested in the data analytics side and understanding um, all of these different uh, uh, problems, but from a slightly less uh, technology oriented perspective, I, I would recommend the postgraduate program in business analytics and business intelligence, our other program. Uh, if you want a high-level business view, over, business overview, um, this is probably not the right program. It's a lot more uh, hands-on and a lot more intense than um, than required for just a high-level business overview, which which you can uh, which you can obtain through you know a slightly shorter, more um, 
or, or less hands-on, more information-dense courses. Um, or if you want to learn a, a specific tool or a couple of tools uh, for certification as a requirement for your jobs, right? So if you just want to get Hadoop certification or if you just want to go and get certified in um, in Spark, I, I believe these are all open source tools, open source uh, technologies. It shouldn't be hard for you to go pick up um, you know, a relatively short term, relatively inexpensive program that, that then helps you get this, uh, get a very specific targeted tool. Um, you know, this program has, is designed to be hands-on, designed to be somewhat rigorous, uh, but but that's because that's what's required for you to get these jobs in big data analytics. If you, uh, you know, if you're already in a position where all you need is, is one particular tool certification, then, you know, you, you probably don't need to go through this whole course. A question we get asked a lot is, is there placement assistance? So we do a lot to help you in your career growth, right? As I said, this whole program is designed explicitly to help you as a technology working professional um, develop into a big data analytics professional, either as a data scientist or a big data engineer or a you know, chief data officer or a data analyst. So we host career development workshops. Um, we give you access to some of the, the lateral opportunities through all of our industry partners. Um, we have specific forums and, and opportunities for you to network with your peers and, and you know some of some of the people taking this course will already be in uh, in the kinds of roles that you'd like to be in. Um, and we have very extensive industry connections, right? So we will have specific sessions where they come with, you know, some of your recruiting um, seniors and and, uh, and leaders at these organizations will come and speak to you. So you will have uh, various opportunities to to interact and, and progress your own careers. But having said all of that, uh, we don't explicitly provide placement assistance. Um, we don't have a placement cell per se, and, and the reasons are fairly straightforward. Uh, we want to focus our energy on making this the best learning environment for working professionals, for executives, for mid-career professionals such as yourself. And um, you know the, the placement process is more suitable for the, the full-time programs where you know everybody comes in on uh, with roughly the same level of experience um, you know takes time off from work and therefore feels the urgent need to then be placed into a particular program um, or a, a particular job role uh, pardon me in this particular context you know we give you all of the opportunities as I mentioned through career development workshops lateral opportunities industry connections and so on for you to make your own careers and so um, you know, we don't we don't explicitly focus on uh, on on placements through a placement cell per se. Okay. Now, I hope this session has answered a lot of your questions. We briefly covered, you know, um, the the opportunity itself, what big data and big data analytics means, um, why this is such an important opportunity, why is everybody talking about it. Um, we talked we've talked briefly about the uh, the kinds of roles you could be getting. Um, and, and how our program uh, in Big Data Analytics, the postgraduate program in Big Data Analytics that Great Lakes offers, why this is uh, possibly a good opportunity for you um, to, to move into these roles if you, if you haven't already. So I hope this has helped answer a lot of your questions. Uh, this won't be the last time we'll be interacting with you. So feel free to reach out to us if you have other questions um, or if you have specific concerns or, or uh, or need clarifications before making a decision on whether or not uh, th this is right for you. Um, again, as I mentioned at the top, my name is Harish Subramanian. I'm the program director for this particular program. Um, and uh, my email is there. You can you can reach out to me at harish at greatlearning.in or you can reach out to our admissions office and um, or, or go to our website at greatlearning.in and, and poke around and learn a little bit more about this program. and someone on our admissions team should be able to help you as well. Um, do your research, you know, figure out if this is the right career opportunity for you. As we've discussed, this is the, the you know, this is an important space to be in, um, regardless of what industry you're in and what vertical you're in. Uh, it, this is not something that, you know, a lot of people make this out to be a an analytics uh, or make this out to be a particular vertical or a particular career opportunity. I believe this is a bit like saying, you know, the use of computers in 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 every industry. 
it happened over the course of a couple of decades and over the course of the next five to ten years pretty much every corner of every industry is going to be uh, touched by big data analytics so you might as well get in on it now um, so good luck with the process for those of you who want to reach out to me or to our admissions team uh, the, the contact details are, are up there on the screen and um, good luck and uh, i hope to see you all very soon thanks